All right, folks. You know, I was up all night uh, watching this Washington Mutual thing go completely uh, up in flames. So I was watching all these other videos uh, from Vision Victory and from Endless Mountain and from Hopeful One, um, and they did a much better job than I could um, discussing the situation with the markets. So I decided to do something a little bit more practical. I'm going to discuss today the importance of a uh, deployment bag or a bug out bag and what needs to be in that bag. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my, uh, my personal bug out bag, which is this. It's a 10 day pack. It's a metal, it's a frame, it's a aluminum frame pack. I just want to first discuss this. Go to your local camping store or, you know, Army Navy store, what have you, and get fitted for the pack. This one cost me about 100, 150 bucks about two years ago, but I got fitted for it. If the pack is not the right size or it's not adjusted to you, it's going to be useless because you won't be able to carry it and all the stuff that you need to survive will be on the ground and you will not be able to basically hump this out. Now, let's talk about living in the city. Um, I come from the, from the basic place where um, I'm assuming in the worst case scenario that I'd have to actually uh, hump out of the city to my, um, my secure place elsewhere outside the city. If you guys live in the country and you're not too far away, um, you know, it's still good to pack your bag, but I pack it based on uh, the fact that it will take me approximately six to ten days to hike up there. So I carry um, six days worth of food in here and we're going to touch on that. Now I'm going to first hit some of the basic stuff. What you first saw, which is this medical bag, cost me about 55 bucks. It's got everything including a splint for your arm and leg. It also comes with a medical book. I would definitely, definitely tell you to read the book now. Don't wait until you're injured or someone else is injured and it's raining out and it's dark and you're not too sure where everything is. Become, you know, aware of where everything is, what is in every bottle, so you're not looking for it later on. Become aware of it as if you'd come, you know, as you know what's in your wallet. You should know what's in this bag. Okay, food. Uh, these MREs, they do come in vegetarian and they do come in kosher. Problem is, for those of us who are practicing kosher, like myself, a little harder to find. But uh, in the case of emergency, I think God will understand. This is a vegetable one. I think it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's tortellini, uh, cheese tortellini and tomato sauce. Um, I have, I bought a case of these. They come 12 in a case, 200 bucks. Uh, I would get them soon. Um, a lot of bigger places online are out. So that's one thing. Another thing. This is a, um, those plastic or the, the, the space blankets that you get at the end of races or, or when you go, uh, when you have an emergency pack. These things trap 90% of your body heat. Critical. I keep this and my medical bag together in my upper pouch up in here. Sorry about the swing around, guys. Now, how to pack your bag. I'm going to tell you the secret of survival, and it's one word, socks. Lots and lots of dry socks. Other thing is cotton. Do not, I repeat, do not carry anything in cotton. There's only two fabrics, two types of materials that are good for camping and hiking and survival. One's a natural fabric, which is wool, and the other one is synthetic. Cotton is the enemy for all of us. If it gets wet, it stays wet and it drops your body, your body heat and places you in a position where you are in um, hypothermia and that's a dangerous place to be. So you should carry approximately four pairs of underwear, not cotton. You can get them, synthetic ones now. Uh, Under Armour sells them. You can go on a military, uh, military sites and stuff and they sell them. Get them. Um, long johns and sh regular shorts. And what I would do is I would pack my clothing, socks on the bottom, um, your change of pants and shirts, second layer from the bottom, 
Now the top layer should be, um, you know, toilet paper, uh, rain gear, hats, carry more than one hat, uh, a baseball cap, and this, which is, I've, there's two hats here. One's a black hat for when you don't want to be seen, and an orange hat when you do want to be seen. It's made out of acrylic. It wicks moisture away, and it keeps you warm. 80% of your body heat goes out the top of your head. You don't cover your head, you're just wasting energy. Energy that you, you badly need if you need to hump out of a city like I, where I live. Now here's one that I don't think anybody's actually talked about, which is these. These are gators. I don't know, you can see it in their black. They cover from the, from the calf to the knee, uh, calf to the boot, and prevents heat uh, from escaping and also water getting in your boot. It basically makes your, your regular boots and your pants into waterproof pants and boots basically because it protects and covers the laces of your boots here up to your calf. So critical. I wear these when I'm hiking in the summer even when I'm wearing shorts and definitely in the winter. It keeps the snow from getting under my pant leg and getting in my socks and it actually makes a vapor barrier so it keeps my feet warm and when and if any of you know who've ever hunted or camped as I have when your feet get cold you can't walk so that's critical. So um, I have my entire bag packed up here I also have a hunting knife and I have a real hunting knife not to try to impress you but if you go hunting you need to be able to gut a deer or be able to you know basically clean out an animal after you've killed it for food so that's kind of critical now the one thing I don't have here which I wish I did but unfortunately where I live in the city of New York it's very complicated and very expensive is to purchase a decent shotgun you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to get an M16, or I mean, M16, uh, you know, like a 9mm weapon. You don't need all that. A decent 20 gauge shotgun will give you the protection you need and will be able to get food because you can choose from buckshot to slug. That's the one thing I don't have. And if I didn't live in the city, I would definitely own one. So just remember pack your bag from least important to most important. Most important is hats rain gear make sure you buy rain pants and a rain jacket real critical make sure you always have hats a baseball cap a waterproof cap and a wool or synthetic hat always always never leave home without it a medical kit and a space blanket sometimes those space blankets come in the medical kit this one didn't have it but I had it from a from a marathon that I had run a couple of years ago so uh, if you have any other questions you want to add anything um, I keep this thing packed and I open it up and I go through it and I make sure I have everything. Um, I also have a, a compass, real critical, a map and a map case, a plastic map case to keep it from getting wet uh, of the area where I need to get from which is here to where I need to go. Well good luck, God bless and if you have any questions or comments please make them known and good luck. We're all going to need it. Peace.